Good day. Today I'm going to talk about an issue that I have. Uh, it's about uh, when it rains heavily, which it has been in the last year in Australia, uh, what happens to my pool. Well, as you can see at the moment, this is a normal pool level for me. I've got about three little mosaic tiles free from the top of the coping, um, which is great because the required water is going into the skimmer box. But what happens is when it rains heavily is rain, the rainwater rises up, reaches over to the edge into that garden bed, brings all that dirt out and goes straight into my pool. Well, um, I did have a few solutions. I had one of these sort of pumps here that would take the water out and spill it out to the side where I have a drain. Um, and I used to automate that with a sensor switch that I put in the skimmer box, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, but I had another problem. These things say that's for the pool. I have a mineral salt pool and it's starting to rust and it's starting to leave some stains that I need to clean up on, on all the, uh, within the pool. So I'll show you what I've done. So what I have here is the uh, Cara leak sensor. This is um, a little Zigbee device that uh, lets you know if it detects a water leak um, and it connects to your home automation platform. I use Habitat for this and um, what detects the water is these two prongs here in the back. As soon as both of them connect with water, uh, it then, uh, um, I guess, uh, closes a circuit and then updates the details to your hub and lets you know that it detects water. These are commonly found maybe on a floor or a basement, um, under a under a sink, uh, anywhere where there's water around the area. Um, and if uh, it does spring a leak, it uh, lets you know pretty pretty easily. Um, problem is, is I found that because it's a mineral pool, um, that uh, it doesn't detect as well with these prongs that are here in the back. Uh, these do come unscrew and then you can connect other wires which I did at one stage and I put those wires in the pool and they detected a lot better um, but uh, then they started corroding themselves so I said oh, how do I get around this and I found this online which is a float switch it's all plastic which is great and as as the water rises it uh, triggers um, I guess closes the contact which is connected to this and then that's your your switch now to detect if there's water or not um, and they're fairly easy to install you just um, unscrew which this is already loosened and then you close it on uh, so this is for demonstration purposes and I will shorten these wires at the end um, and the, end, the other one goes on the other side uh, on the back here is some um, velcro that I added on this is uh, outdoor rated velcro from a hardware store and I'll show you um, what I'll do with that in a moment another thing that I've done is I needed a mount so that I can connect this into my skimmer box so I found a box uh, with a, a lid that was broken and I was about to chuck it out. So I said I'll, I can reuse this as a sort of like a little L bracket. Cut a hole, which uh, I'll thread this in now. And then I'll stuck the Velcro as well. So let's get this in here nice and nice and easy And it does come with a nut. So then it's nice and secure. OK, 
Okay, let's move over to the skimmer box and I'll show you how I mounted it in. Okay, so here's the skimmer box. I've put the same outdoor uh, rated Velcro up here. And um, you know what I can do is I can mount the float here. And if you can see, I can dip the float in, which will enable it. And uh, that would pop up an alert on my phone, which it just did. You won't be able to hear it though. Um, so I can sort of, it's great that I put the whole big long strip is I can adjust the height to whatever I need. So I think I'll stick it about there, which is good. And then that still gives me room to mount this. As I said, I'll clean up the wires later and there you have it and it just sits in there nice and flush and um, I, st I won't have any issues with the lid for my skimmer box either I'll just sit comfortably in there okay so the next part of my automation has several parts um, so we have the the Yakara water leak sensor, that, was, that is to detect the water level, but now I need to automate my pump going on and off. So the first part, which is the main part, which is the important part, I guess, is the, the water pump. This is a, an Azito um, pump that's commonly used, or I guess the purpose is for, for boats. So it is seawater rated. It is a 12 volt pump. Uh, water comes in from the bottom and comes out of this tube, which then I can spit out the side of my retaining wall. Uh, this 12 volt pump, the maximum is uh, three amps that it can draw. Um, and it comes with a one meter cable, which is not long enough for my purposes. So what I have done is I've put uh, some uh, shrink tube around it, but then to join uh, the pumps wire to my own wire, I use these solder splice um, shrink uh, tubes. So you use a heat gun to melt two wires together and there's a bit of solder in the middle which will also melt and then um, join them together and they will be watertight. I will um, clean this up further to cover this so it looks a lot nicer this is just again for demonstration purposes so I've got a five meter twin core cable which then comes onto this smart switch this smart switch is a Shelly one device they are Wi-Fi controlled they're cheap and they're pretty reliable and the great thing is it also talks to my home automation hub, which is Habitat. Uh, the wiring of these are fairly messy compared to some other smart switches that I'm used to. Uh, one good one is a Z-Wave, the uh, EOTech branded ones. You don't need any of this messy wiring coming back in. Um, but anyway, I've got the pump connected to the uh, O and the neutral i then have this wire going from the load to the eye um, and for the power coming in i have this 12 volt 2.5 amp power supply which then connects to the neutral as well along with the load um, so your red wire for your for your uh, power coming in does go to the neutral and the black wire goes into the load and the same goes for your pump the red wire goes into the neutral and the white wire in my case but the black so the negative goes into the O now another great thing about these Shelly switches is they are 110 to 240 volts or 12 volts and to do that 
there are two little grommets here. This is for, I think, like a serial connection. But this one here, you pull the rubber tab out. And there's a little jumper inside. And if you move it to the left, that's 240. If you move the jumper to the right, that is 12 volts. Now, this will stay undercover. But I have a friend of mine who has a 3D printer. And he will create a nice housing for this to make it a lot neater. So this will stay on the cover here in uh, my sort of uh, covered uh, alfresco area, along with the power supply because it's not a weatherproof power supply. And then this would lead out over into the pool. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, now we have it all set up. So let me run you through a scenario. Uh, I'm away on on uh, on holidays, or I know it's going to be extremely heavy weather coming up in the forecast, and uh, I don't want to sit there empty at the pool in the middle of the rain uh, from my pump area um, multiple times a day. Um, so I can throw this out in advance, and I have a float sensor here that once it reaches a certain level what it'll do first it'll send me an, an alert and the alert will happen whether this pump is in the water or not um, and then from there if it maintains that level for two minutes just in case something could be splashing around the pool um, and we don't want false alerts if it uh, maintains at a wet level for two minutes it will then kick off this pump. Now you can set up your rules anytime you, any way you like. Uh, the way that I've done mine is that anytime this pump is on, it will run for a certain length of time. I timed how long it will take to drop from one, one mosaic tile level to the next. And I'm using that as my baseline. So if it's higher than, uh, I guess, less than two tiles left, um, it will then run for a certain amount of minutes until it gets to that certain level. Um, now, another thing that I'd like to mention is that one issue that I found with this pump is that if this is too low, it uh, actually has a siphoning effect. Um, this didn't happen with the previous pump that I had uh, that got rusted out. So if I switch this on and then switch it off, it will continue to run. Oh, it didn't do it this time. It did do it last night. So as a safety precaution anyway, I'm going to leave it up high so there is no siphoning effect. And then I'm not going to have a pool that is totally empty. Well, that's all... Um, Take care and I hope uh, I solve some issues for people that are having the same problem as me where where the water drains from the pool. It's, it's not, not in a desirable way. I've got other family and friends that if the pool overflows, it just overflows and doesn't cause any issues. Um, and I'm afraid I'm not in that situation because part of council rules as well is I can't have a raised flower bed to stop the water entering there. That's all you have it. Have a great day. Thank you.